Well, welcome back. So, last video we did our temporary solar mounts, built those, got the solar panels mounted, and started wiring all the off-grid power stuff. This last weekend we did have some pretty big storms come through, real heavy wind. So, before it came in, Shan and I went through and got a lot of these big rocks we've been collecting and just put underneath the mounts. And those things didn't budge, but I mean, we got them heavy. So that held up real good so far. And then had to order another inline fuse and then go get some mounting screws to put the last few things up. So I'm gonna go ahead and hang the inverter in here and the charge controller and then try to start wiring the rest of it up. The hope is to get this thing online by end of the week. <sighs> yeah, I'm not sure we can fit two of us in here. Okay. But I gotta try to lift this, get it up on that bracket, and get it set down. I might see if you can fit in here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Which side? My left. Come in from this other side. I don't know if you'll be able to hold there at all. I think it needs screwed in. Can you hold it right there without moving? It's chilly under here. Yes, it is. That wind's just cutting through and being in the shade. <laughs> explanation on this. Yes, it's mounted crooked. I'm not just off balance. Victron says to mount these things vertical if possible. It's designed to bring air in from the bottom, across the components, and vent out the top. You also have to have a four inch perimeter around it. In the, what is it, 150 series reflections, fifth wheels. It's a smaller compartment up here. This cannot fit vertical like that. A lot of people go ahead and I've seen them done horizontally and they say it's fine. I've seen some people lay it flat on its back, but it's designed for the airflow that way. I'm gonna do what I can to get as close as that as I can. This was my solution. Looks weird, but should be closer to what they recommend. And then the factory battery has a vent up here. I'm gonna get like a computer fan or small like four inch fan and then hook a temp sensor to it and then put an inlet on the other side so in the summer if this does start getting too hot I'll pull air through this cavity here and then that should naturally pull the air up through that if I put the other vent at the bottom on the other side so hopefully that takes care of my ventilation needs so now I just got to mount the charge controller
All right, so pretty productive day. Inverters mounted, solar chargers mounted, and everything is wired up for the solar charger. And then the main DC voltage supply to the inverter is hooked up. I still gotta get some 6.3 wire to run from this to the panel in the camper. And then I've got, I've got the cable, but I've gotta run the DC wires that go from here to the DC panel in the camper. So that needs done, but theoretically, I can turn all my disconnects on and I would have power to this. I'd be able to power on the inverter, can't run anything out of it, of course, but it's at least powered if I wanted. But I don't have my torque wrench here, so I gotta run to the storage unit. We're gonna pick up the torque wrench, torque all these connections, and then I'll be able to turn on the solar panel disconnect, which should power up the charge controller and then I can log into that and do all the settings I need to set for it to do what it needs to do with these kind of batteries. So that'll be tomorrow, next day or two, but I'll get those wrapped up and then update you with where I get with that here soon. All right, so this project's been dragging out way too long. It's not that I've got tons and tons of hours in it. I've gotten called away for work stuff. We've had some family stuff. We've had other things going on that I've just not been able to consistently get to this. Not to mention the weather. We had six inches of rain last weekend. So then just dealing with all that, I haven't been able to get back to this. And winter won't let up. Batteries aren't doing good as far as the deep cycle. I did buy a new Walmart one, the cheapest one I could, but it's still, to get through 10 hours or so of furnace running, it still struggles. So the goal today is to set this up and actually get my DC stuff hooked up to these batteries instead of the Walmart deep cycle. My lifetime batteries, I do have the 280 amp hour battery in here. Lifetime is sending me a second one. It should be here today. I'd order two initially, the one just won't clear the fault. So that one should be here today, but then I'll have to get it charged up. So I'm gonna get this going with the one battery for now and start monitoring my usage. I am taking a shortcut for now. So you have your factory bus bars over here for your positive negative from the house battery. I'm just disconnecting those and hooking to that for now, then we'll send it up to the panel. So then I'll be going from my bus bar to their bus bar, but then it cuts back across to a shutoff in the inside of the storage bay and then to the DC panel. I'm gonna get that going, test it, get the DC stuff working. And then once it's working, which is hopefully pretty quick here in a little bit, then I'm gonna go to the inside and start running a new four gauge. So I will take a four gauge positive from my bus bar that's a direct route to the DC panel inside. But I'm gonna get it working now through the current ones and then I'll work my way backwards. The short one I'm, put, I'm making now that'll go to their bus bar, I'm gonna disconnect the jumper that goes from their bus bar to the DC panel inside, but the other, I'll re reuse the rest of it because that's stuff like the stabilizer jacks and the stuff that's not ran to that disconnect. So then I'll just power that bus bar for those few accessory things, but then I will have a continuous run from my larger bus bar to the panel. And then I'll also start running my cable for the 110. Victron does say to use 6.2 wire for this. That is way overkill. That's because this is a, I think 50 amp, if I remember right, I might be misspeaking a little there, but I believe it's a 50 amp. Oh, actually it's right on a 50 amp, but I think it has a surge capacity of 70 amp. So they have you do a 6.2 wire. It's a 30 amp camper. We're not gonna be anywhere near that but I'm gonna go ahead and run the 6.2 anyway. Overkill, yes, pain to work with, a little more expensive, but then I can upgrade later if I need to. If I, if I wanted to make this a 50 amp later, I'd be set up for it. Whatever I wanna do generator wise, just it's good to go. So at least, at least I know I'm future proof. 
but got ends on it. one of these. I just got to crimp ends on the other. And I'm to the point I can go ahead and turn the disconnect off in here and I'm gonna start wiring these in and see if it works. All right, so this one right here is my four gauge for my DC panel, my ground for my DC panel. Both those swing back down here to the factory bus bar, so positive. So this one comes up in from the battery. This one right here is what feeds to the DC panel. I am going to get a direct run, like I said a little bit ago. There will be one from that bus bar replace this and go directly up without any connects. So that will be coming. And then the ground, I just looped back in here to the chassis ground that they had set up. So we should be good to turn it on and check voltage to this point now. Okay, so. There. We have full voltage. And the one going inside. We are good. So now just go turn the disconnect on that this runs over to, and then we should have DC power in the camper. Power. Power. All right, so batteries are powering the camper now. And heck, the furnace just kicked on even, so batteries are powering the furnace. So now I just gotta log into the app, see how much energy I'm drawing. All right, so I'm gonna log in, try my light time one first. Let's connect to this good battery. So it's 100%. Odd that it's not showing current, so I'm not so sure about this live time app. So I'm not showing much there. So we're going to go back to the Victron app. And let's start with the Serbo GX. I don't have my touchscreen set up yet. remember how to do this. I think it's the online portal. Which, let's see if this works. Because I've not hooked 110 up so my Wi-Fi is not on. So let's see. Can't really tell much here. Oh, probably because I still have my inverter off. So let's go back. To the app. Check out my charge controller, see if it's showing. So, battery voltage holding. Ah, oh, there we go. So, the furnace is pulling 8 amps. Solar panels are 139 volts, and we're putting in 120 watts of solar. So we'll let the camper warm up for a few and actually it just 
got warmed up because I just heard the fan kick off. So, cool. We at least have heat with the lithium battery and solar is charging, so that's cool. So now to start mapping out the 110. All right, so just did a quick check through everything inside. Everything's working. I did have to disconnect the factory converter, which I pulled the fuse. So in the DC panel, there's a seven and a half amp fuse for the converter. I pulled that and then checked my voltage, had my solar panels off, checked voltage of the batteries, and I fired up my generator. The voltage jumped up a little bit. So somehow, even with the fuse out, which doesn't make sense, it was sending some voltage back through which you don't want the factory converter on these older campers to be charging the lithiums. Plus I've got this Victron anyway. So I had to go in and take the panel cover off and they basically took the hot and tied into the, the hot leg for the converter goes to the hot water heater. And they jumped those together and went into a breaker. So I was able to just disconnect that, plug the water heater right back into the breaker by itself and then pull the neutral on the ground for the converter so it is still attached on the DC side to the circuit panel it looks like it's welded into there or soldered excuse me but it's disconnected no effect on the voltage now so now I got my solar panels back on so the solar panels are charging the batteries and then the 110 runs separately so I'm still generator for 110 at the moment but I'm gonna go ahead and start running my cable for that now and see how close I can get to getting that hooked up today, maybe. All right, so done for today. Everything is working, 110, DC, camper's all going on it. We have the solar panels going. It's messy. I've got to figure out how to reroute some of this, clean it up a little bit, so I'm gonna work on that. And my little monitor. I gotta figure out where I'm gonna mount that. So I gotta get some extensions for the USB and the HDMI to get this mounted and figure out for sure where I'm going to put it where I wanted to. I don't have easy access, so I'll have to think about that some more, but like currently, I went and got the TV on. I mean, there's just a couple lights on, just some stuff in there. We're pulling 57 watts in the camper currently, and we're putting in 85 watts from the solar. Battery's pretty much topped off, pulling a couple amps, so performing pretty well. Where I have the solar panels is not optimal. I do not have it lined up to true south and I do not have it on adjustable mounts. So I need to tinker with that a little bit. My second battery showed up so I got to get that in line so then I and then it'll be a matter of seeing through a 24-hour period, seven-day period, what's our high and lows and so that'll be trial and error. And you have to excuse if there's noise up here. I don't know what Sky's doing. I think she's playing on the bed but so got dog going crazy here but yeah so for today i'm cleaning up i'm pooped wasn't too bad today once i got into it i just needed time to dedicate which i haven't had lately but yeah i'll pivot around i'll show you some of the connection points and how it's laid out but yeah worked out pretty good i just still got to get better at doing the like you have this monitor but you can get it onto it on your computer or on your phone bluetooth wi-fi there's all kinds of options i gotta figure out which ones are easiest yeah, so just working through all that, but we'll wrap it up for now. Hopefully now that this is going, we can actually get back to doing projects around the property. So now I got to get to knocking more of this brush down, cutting roads into it, and it's actually starting to dry out. So hopefully my excavation guy shows up. But for now, I'm going to wrap it up. Appreciate you guys watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.